Hey, happy Friday morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Well, we are continuing our review and response to Joel Richardson's book, Mystery Babylon, Unlocking the Bible's Greatest Prophetic Mystery. Now, Mr. Richardson uh, posits that the Islamic movement, uh, the Islamic nation, and Mecca, the capital, is Babylon of Revelation. And he sets out to establish that. And as I've suggested to you already, with no disrespect whatsoever intended toward Mr. Richardson, I'd love to meet him in formal public debate to discuss this very issue, by the way. But I find his book to be so presuppositional. It violates so many rules of hermeneutic. And, of course, what's so ironic about that is that Mr. Richardson, as he discusses different issues, says, well, we have to practice good hermeneutic. Well, that's exactly right. But then he violates those rules of hermeneutic. He, he makes logical leaps that have no foundation in the text itself. And a prime example of this, and by the way, Mr. Richardson is not the only one that is guilty of this. In commentator after commentator after commentator, or commentary, I find this same assumption being made. It is an assumption, however, that the text does not support. And here's the, here is the argument. Now, by the way, he tells us on page 16 that Babylon, whoever it was, was a desert city. Okay. At the same time, however, he tells us Babylon is, page 17, a, quote, port city, unquote. Let me read to you. Quote, beyond being a desert city or nation, the last day's Babylon will also be a port city or at least close to the shore. After Babylon is judged and destroyed by God, a great lament arises specifically from three groups of people kings, merchants, and seafarers. They mourn because of their loss in revenue, specifically that no one buys their cargoes any longer. The word for cargoes is gomos and refers specifically to freight carried by ship or by boat. The text tells us that every shipmaster and every passenger and sailor, as many as they make their living by the sea, stood at a distance and were crying out as they saw the smoke of her burning, all who had ships at sea became rich by her. The fact that all these seafarers can see the smoke of her destruction seems to indicate that she is located either directly on or in close proximity to the seashore. Unquote. And my response to that is, this proves nothing whatsoever. This is such a leap in logic. This is such a conjecture. Look, folks, you will read eight, Revelation 18 over and over a hundred times, and it will never say that Babylon was a port city. Does it say that the shipmasters and the tradesmen would lament losing the commerce from Babylon? Well, yes, it does. But does that prove that Babylon was a port city? Well, let me illustrate. You know, Ardmore, Oklahoma is pretty much a landlocked city. We do not have any ports, seaports, anywhere near us. We are dependent on imports, many of which, and all you got to do is go to a local store and say, made in China. <laughs> The fact that we have and possess product after product after product after product made overseas, imported from overseas, brought into ports, does not prove that Ardmore, Oklahoma is a port city. And by the way, just the other night, I was watching a fantastic documentary on the Mayan uh, city of Machu Picchu. Have you ever 
watch documentaries about that city? Is it Mayan or Incan? I always get that confused. Anyway, here is this city, which was considered to be a royal city, built on the top of a mountain. There is nothing for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. It was believed that Machu Picchu was the royal capital for the king of the empire. And over, it was believed that over 500 families lived there. Again, a royal residence. Well, the scholars begin to ponder. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You got this city built in the absolute center of nowhere. Now, this is jungle. But it doesn't matter. That's still the point. It's built in the absolute middle of nowhere on the top of a mountain. It is extremely difficult to get to. How was it supported? It didn't grow. It didn't manufacture everything it needed. Guess what? Guess how it got its goods? By importing it from the sea. Was Machu Picchu a portal city? A port city? Absolutely not. Was it close to the ocean? Had no ships. But it was support, uh, completely supported by imports. You know, now they have found paths through the, de uh, through the jungle leading to the imported import areas that would bring the goods in, transport them up to the middle of nowhere of Machu Picchu. And folks, let's not forget, even Josephus himself, who once lived in Jerusalem, who knew the commerce of Jerusalem extremely well. Josephus says this, quote, Nor indeed is Judea destitute of such delights as come from the sea, since its maritime places extend as far as Ptolemaeus. Unquote. That's from Wars, Book 3, Chapter 3. Paragraph 5. So Josephus, even though he acknowledges that Jerusalem was not itself a maritime force, okay, he nonetheless tells us that Jerusalem and Judea enjoyed the imports from the sea and its, that's Judea and Jerusalem, it's maritime places. That's maritime places that belong to Jerusalem and Judea. It is therefore simply a false narrative. It is a false assumption. It is a preconceived claim. Not based upon fact at all to deny that Jerusalem, number one, was dependent upon imports, and number two, actually had maritime influence. Do you suppose that all of the sailors, all of the merchants, all of the tradesmen that made their living supplying this landlocked city with all of her goods, for the temple, for the marketplace, and now she's destroyed. Do you think they would lament their loss? Well, who could deny that? And so when we read Mr. Richardson's book, and he tells us that Revelation teaches that Babylon was a port city, folks, I'm sorry. That is simply not true. If you want to see a great historical development, that is to say, a citation of one historical source after another from a wide variety of sources to prove that Jerusalem was indeed a major commercial city, you need to get a copy of my book, 
who is this Babylon? Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, order the book and say that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll pay your shipping. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. God bless. I'll see you on Monday.